Whoa. Oh, I need it immediately. Ah, coffee. Coffee. Okay. Welcome back to Arkham Horror. So, so it's been a while since my last turn because basically I've been doing an update to the mod. I've added or some more, a whole bunch of more stuff to the mod. So that's why this was a bit late. But let's get into it now. Let me just quickly reacquaint myself with what the hell is going on here. Okay, so we've got one seal. We have nothing going on. Okay, you, you can't go to the diner or to the uh, Mars boarding house. We have Ang uh, Angus. Oh, I can never pronounce her name. Agnes. Agnes? Let's not call her Angie. So we've got Angie up in another world, which comes out at the witch house with Hound of Tindalos on it. She needs to use her focus to put up that so she can close. She has enough clues. What else is going on? We are very short on weapons and stuff, which sucks the big suckiness. The major things we want to do in this turn is clear monsters. So we've got this girl who actually has the ability to get easier to close gates, which is gonna be very handy. What, what is this? Yes, yeah, so it's a negative one. So we basically negate that. I'd like him to close some gates because he can use knowledge's power, which basically allows you to pick the dimensional symbol when you close the gate, which is awesome. Um, let me think. Okay, so she's got to go one, two, three. I've got a plan. Let's do this. Starting with Daisy's turn. Yoink. First thing we do is Voice of Ra, which is five minus one, which is four dice. We don't pay the sanity cost. We just do this every single turn to get plus one to all skill checks. Daisy is a beast, my friends. Okay, that's a big pass. So she's now plus one. Yoink. Let's do the Necromonicon, which is law minus two. That gives her uh, four dice. Because remember, she's now six because it's... Uh, because of Ra, Gablamo, Gablamo, and a Gablamo. Whoa, gee, just makes it. Gives us a spell. Ah, oh, right, okay. So Call of Azure is, allows you to draw a condition that has like a special power on it. Problem is, I haven't actually added them to this version of the mod yet. So this is a dead, this card cannot actually be used. So let's just uh, get rid of it. I'm gonna send that to the box and draw the next one. Yep, I am. Yellow Mist, uh, this can't be used either, right? You may cast an exhaust for each success token on your spell check. You may return one monster from the outskirts to the monster cup. But guess what? In this particular game, because we're playing eight players, we have a zero outskirts, which means that card is also unusable in this game and probably should have been taken out before I did the setup. So let's uh, draw another one. Send that one to the box as well. And Yablamo! Spectral Razor. Here's one we can actually use. So this is a very, very good spell for a late game when you're blessed. So if you're blessed and you're rolling a heap of dice, this is super good. Cast an exhaust to get plus X to combat checks until the end of this combat where X is twice the number of successes you rolled. This spell can easily produce huge amounts, like way more than you will ever need. Like you can use this to basically kill anything in the game, no worries. I've used this spell to basically one shot the uh, Dunwich Horror on every turn. It's just a ridiculous spell. It's particularly good with uh, Daisy because of her Iron Wit ability. It actually costs one to cast a spell instead of two. So she gets this super powerful spell basically for free in a way. Because the two sanity cost is actually pretty hardcore. See, this is this would be great for Angie. I might actually give this to Angie because it would be whatever the skill check is plus the two hands because of her ability, blood is power. And then she's also got Mystic Knights to gain the sanity back. So it's a very good spell for everybody in concerned. Awesome. Okay, back to Daisy's next turn. We're also going to do Illuminated Manuscript, which is a law minus one. Uh, what can we get with this? 
Draw one skill, but or gain one clue token. Okay, so we're going to use this and gain a clue token. So that is law minus one is uh, five dice. Because remember, we're plus one because of voice of Ra. Daisy is so bonkers, man. Daisy is probably one of the most powerful in the game. There's another girl, I can't remember her name. She's like a violinist, right? And her ability is that anybody can use the clues that she has. So she can basically, you just use her to just stack clues. And then anyone on the game, even if they're in the other world, can use her clues as if they're their, their own. And it it's crazy powerful. <laughs> Whatever, so we pass that as well. So we gain another clue. So we now have five clues. Her ability is six clues. Now we've used four movement for the two tones, but we're going to tap fellow travelers. That gives us an extra movement point. And we're just going to move into the streets here. Bam. Now that we're in this Mistonic streets, it means that people can move through her and pick up all her spells and awesome junk that she's collected over the time, which is good. Okay, next. Okay, this guy, he gets... Uh, to cash and then he rolls the die he's had this the whole game so if we're lucky we'll keep it for another turn Whoa! beautiful now what are we going to do with him he's got three movements hmm. see the thing is we want to kill the hound of tindalos but angie doesn't really have the power she's got a plus three to combat here That'll give her, uh, what, four. And the Tinder loss is a minus one with two. It's really a bit hard for her. We've got to get her a decent spell. So what I want to do is actually send this chick to kill the hound. And then Angie, because in the turn order, we're going down like a round in a circle. Angie will then close the gate before her action phase, uh, her Arkham encounter phase, which means that she'll then do the witch house. Anyway, that's the plan. So what I'm trying to get is that he's not going to go one, two, three. Instead, he's going to go one, two, three to the police station, I guess. There's a chance of getting a common item and a thing -o. And I think while he's there, he's also going to take all her money. Like so. Kablam. What else can he take? I think he'll give her the gate box. He's got the shotgun and the magnum. Uh, I think we'll just keep that. Okay, that's pretty much his turn. Next, Michael Glenn's turn. He wants to kill monsters, but there is no monsters for him to kill. I guess he could kill this thing, right? How many clues has he got? He's got five clues, which is all he needs to seal a gate. How much is this? Negative, ooh, negative three. Sanity two. Whenever you or your partner cast a spell, either or both of you may contribute towards paying the cost. Either you or your partner exhaust this card before making a spell check to gain plus one. You know what? Let's do it. We're going to go one, two, three. And uh, kill this thing. It's Arkham Horror, baby. you gotta, you got to take risks. So he needs three movement, which he's got. Oh, we could just sneak by it. I don't know. Three movement, which we've got. We've got a will of one die. So we've got one die to make this. You blammo! Come on. Come on! Come on! Yes! <laughs> got to take risks in Arkham Horror. Otherwise, why play? Whew! Awesome. Okay, so we missed, missed the sanity. So it was minus three off his four will for his sanity. That gave... Because we only got two sanity total. And now we have three fight. This has no resistances, so we're going to use the Tommy gun, which is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. It gives him nine dice. We need two hits off nine dice. Should be doable. Easily done. Wow. Got machine gun. 
just machine guns the elder thing to pieces. Yoink! And we need five monster trophies for this. We've got one, two, three. Okay, so that's all good. Okay, we know what she's going to do. She's going to go one, two, three to here uh, and fight these things. But on the way, she's going to pick up some junk from here. Let's take Storm of Spirits. There's actually a lot of good spells here. I guess that's all we're going to take, Storm of Spirits. And let's give her... Call a friend and the tome. So she gets call a friend and we'll give her the t another tome. This one allows us to remove a doom token. So we'll definitely use that at some point. Now that she's got it, we don't get any sanity loss. Daisy is broken and that's good for me. Yonk, yonk. Okay, so we're going to do the My Gal first because that's going to give us the possibility of drawing an awesome, unique item before we fight the ghost. So, for starters, we haven't actually used any of her focus yet. So, let's... Uh, yeah, so we're going to use her focus to go down one. And the reason we're doing that is because we now have Storm of Spirits which gives her the ability to use her lore as her combat, which is awesome for this character. So it's four minus one, which gives us three dice for the sanity check. And that's a fail. It's a real bummer. It's a, uh, it's, Fail, but that's two sanity she just lost. Awesome. Gee, what a what a ridiculousnessnessnessness. Should I spend a clue to fix that? She, how many clues does she need? She needs plus one bonus to all skill checks to seal a gate. In addition, one less clue required. She actually needs she only needs four. So I'm going to spend one clue in the off chance that we will pass this. Come on. Come on. Oh, look at that. Bam. So let's uh, uh, let's uh, give her sanity back. And now we're going to cast Storm of Spirits, which has a zero cost. So it's Law minus one, which gives her five, because she has a plus Law up here. Diablamo. Diablamo. And this is why this spell's so good, because it's got zero sanity cost. So that is plus three to combat, but look at the other bit. Use law instead of fight. So she has six law because of this, plus three, one, two, three, and then there's no modifier. So that's nine dice for one hit. We're definitely gonna achieve this. I don't imagine. Bam, look at that. Smack. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What a massive murdering. Okay, and we've killed the Mygar. Now, the Mygar you don't keep, unfortunately, but you do draw a unique item. I'll just send that to the box. And your Blamo. Alien Statue. Okay, this is interesting because this is... I love this. I love the lore of this one, right? So we found this weird statue and we just have to peer at it, just looking at it, looking at its the eyes and touching it and feeling it. it just sends us slowly crazy but allows us to glean insight into the great beyond. <laughs> so basically you can look at this, you exhaust it, you spend a sanity, you roll a die. If it's success, you draw a spell or gain clue token. So this is just a spell grabber, clue token grabber. And remember, we have Mystic Knights, which means that we can actually uh, gain sanity pretty easily on this character. So this is a great token awesome okay now we've got this guy so it is will is to die come on come on that's a pass and we're going to do the same thing so it is five die to roll for the storm which has a sanity cost of zero we pass 
and then it is uh, six, seven, eight, nine minus one, two, three, which is six die for one hit. Come on, sublamo, and that is another pass. Yoink. Uh, where's the? Oh wait, it was a migo, wasn't it? So we didn't keep a trophy. Right, and that's her turn. You damn done. You boink. Okay. Now Agnes. She's going to use her focus to go one, two, and then just simply come out of the other world. And bam, here she is. Uh, I've forgotten the key. I think it's the eight key. Ooh. Yes, it's the eight key. I really should uh, write the key into the notebook, like all the hotkeys into the notebook so people can easily reference that. Whatever, so she's out of the gate. She's come out of the gate and she has gotten the token. And when you get the token, you're not required to fight the monster at the location on your first turn. Now, what's interesting here is actually, we don't even need to fight this monster because if we close this gate, it's got a square icon, which will send this back to the cup, but I would rather kill it if I can. ability has she got to kill things she's got bind monster for starters she's got plus two magic she's got plus two combat there yeah so I was actually planning to send her one two three and then kill this but I don't actually even need to because it's got the the symbol so I kind of screwed up the turn here basically instead of George taking the money from Rita, he's going to give his money to Rita. Okay, so that's that. Okay, this bloke here, he's got to head down to the river docks. Let's go one, two, three to the train station. Then he can go one, two, three to the river docks. We'll stay on luck. We'll uh, let's move his fight up one. He's actually got really good weapons over here. He's got the Tommy gun and the blade. This is my favorite weapon in the game for magical. It's a four combat magical weapon with one hand. It's awesome. Okay, Yorick's turn now. Your blammo. So Yorick is... Oh, he's got the tome. Excellent. And he's got 4C. Okay, so he is going to go one... I think he's going to go one, two into the administration and try and get some money. But passing by Daisy, he's going to give Daisy the dusty manuscript and for C. And I think that is about it, Skilly. Okay, so that gives her another yet another skill plus two plus one to spell checks and for C. So allows her to re-roll things. So she is getting super strong already. Is there anything we want to give back? I don't think we're going to give anything back. And that's pretty much it. Okay, now Rita's turn. She's going to go one, two, uh, one, two, three, four to the curiosity shop. She has to pay one stamina for that because of the sweltering heat from Cthulhu burning away. <laughs> And that's pretty much that. So we'll leave everything else the way it is. Let's just go one, one, just so she's got some freedom for the next when we do want to adjust it. Oh, we also get two, uh, $2 and roll for the retainer. You blammo! Oh, we almost got the one. It landed on the one and then just rolled off it. Beautiful. Okay time to do our turn so she's in the street she does nothing he is at the police station click O. if you succeed at a luck minus one check then deputy dingby absentmindedly leaves you holding his gun you may search the common deck for a 45 of oh excellent the 45 uh we're going to get this five uh five lux that gives us four dice come on i'm sure we'll get this uh, beautiful 
Okay, so the 45 is one of the best commons because it's one-handed plus four to combat check. Excellent. Thank you very much, Copper. Okay, he's at the unvisited aisle, but he's actually on a gate. He gets sucked into the City of the Great Race, which is here. Yoink. She is also sucked into the Great Hall of Selenio. She is going to close this gate. So this gate is a plus zero. So she has six. So she rolls six die. She has plus one luck, not law. I read that as law, law for some reason. Whatever, the blamo. Come on, and that's an easy pass. Which means we have closed and sealed this gate because we spend one, two, three, four, five clues. Yoink. Now, because we closed this gate, we didn't seal it. I mean, we sealed it. Sorry, big pardon. Oh, what am I doing here? We, we sealed it, but we didn't use our Elder Sign token, so we don't actually lose a, you know, a, a Doom token. And we get the Hound. Now, the Hound has the matching square, so it actually gets sent back to the box. Awesome. Okay, and now it is... There's no other... Well, there's only other one. We killed all the monsters except for one. Uh, we're at the train station. What you got for us? Bill Washington moves the last of the baggages from his cart onto the truck and offers you a ride as he opens the driver door. If you accept, move to any location or street in Arkham. If you move to a location, immediately have an encounter there. Excellent. So we definitely want to do that. Where do we need to go next? The river docks. So, okay, so let's just go straight down to the unnameable. That way a gate can't open under us because it's sealed, unless it's a gate burst. We'll get a, an event there, then we can go bam, bam, and get an event there. So, unnameable. Yablamo. You bump into Eric Colt. Uh, let's just see if he is in there. Yes, Eric Colt is here. Okay, so we haven't actually lost anything. So let's have a look at him. This is public information. So it's plus two speed, which is kind of who cares because if we use too much speed, we get hurt. But the nightmare ability is good. And I guess it does allow us to keep our sneak high. Okay, let's have a look here. What is it? You bump into Eric Colt. He tells you a horrible tale of the mythos to test your nerve. If you listen, lose two sanity. If this doesn't drive you insane, take his ally card if it's available. If it's not available, which it is, so who cares. So, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna take him. I like getting these things. So that is plus two speed. Oh, he does have plus law. Yeah, I knew he had plus law. So he's got plus law, plus luck, and plus speed. And that is two sanity hits. Okay. Yoink. Yorick is in the science building. What you got for us? An archaeology professor shows you an item you recovered in an Egyptian pyramid. If you have two or fewer spells, it glows in your hands and you find yourself outside, still holding it. Not wanting to confront the professor again, you decide to keep it, gain one unique item, and move to the streets. If you have more than two spells, nothing happens. He has zero spells, so bam, we get a item. Oh! Beautiful. So, that's a really good tome that allows you to take any spell of your choice, isn't it? Oh, look at this. This is, uh, this is another endless one. You don't discard it. Exhaust and spend two movement points to make a law minus two check. If you pass, draw one spell and gain one clue. But lose two sanity, which we never do if it's Daisy. Oh, no, and discard. I don't know what I'm talking about here. 
So basically, it's like a normal, except you also get a clue. Still, whatever. We'll give that to Daisy, and that'd be awesome. So... Get rid of this, and we move to the street, don't we? Very science building. Move to the street. So, boom, and that's where Daisy is. And finally, Rita's turn. Rita is at the curiosity shop. She's going to go one, two, three. Oh, the ruby. I love the ruby. Oh, Elder Sign. Well, we have to buy the Elder Sign, don't we? So that is one, two, three, four, five. Yoink. Yoink. And that's it. So this is a real shame we didn't get to use this. I love this one. So this is a physical weapon, but it is ignores physical resistance. Not physical immunity, but physical resistance. But it's an eight combat check. It's pretty awesome. And what's even better is that it can actually embalm endless monsters. It's a very, very good spell in my opinion. You blamo. I love this game so much. Okay, next. Oh, that's it. We're done. Okay, let's do our uh, encounters. So, Mr. Matonic University Streets, nothing. I oh, know. We just did our encounters. What am I talking about now? Oh, we'll do our otherworldly encounters now. Okay, City of the Great Race. Boom. We are here. Pass a luck minus one check to find something useful among the incomprehensible artifacts. If so, draw one unique item. We have a luck of three. That gives us two dice. Beautiful. Uh, no sanity losses or anything. One unique item coming up. You're born. What you got for us? <gasps> the golden sword of Yahatala. Yes. Okay. Look at this. One-handed exhaust before making a combat jack for plus five. Now... This is a sort of different kind of weapon. So most of the weapons, like say this one here, it's just plus four to all combat checks. This one can only be used for a single round of combat because you're actually exhausted after use. But the thing is, you usually always win in a single round. If, you're, if you lose a round of combat, you're usually on the back foot. Most of the time you want to have enough dice to just get through the first round. So this is actually super good. And that is awesome. Very happy with that. Over here, we have the Great Hall of Selenio. Your red-eyed reflection in the mirror captures your attention. Stay here next turn. Boo. So she's just delayed. And that's that's it. Okay, Mythos Phase. You blamo. Okay, urban environment. Uh, graveyard gets a gate, which is here. And we get two monsters. We have, a, oh, a Cathogian. Ugh. Shies, and that could really screw us up. Let's get a Doom token. We have to kill that immediately. So basically, instead of moving, right, you just roll, and on a 50% chance, everyone loses their stamina. This can absolutely wipe out your board because in late game, you're all sort of hovering around one or two stamina. This is a vicious monster and must be destroyed immediately. Who's close? Ah, oh, this guy's in the other world. Oh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, what have we got here? We've got circles, squares, and diamonds. The only other monster is the Night Gaunt. He is a circle, so she moves out into Rivertown Streets. And that be the end of that, my friends. Oh, wait, what's the actual text? Clue appears at the Unvisited Isle, which has a gate, so that doesn't do anything. Medical supplies contaminated. Oh no, this is a bad one. So basically, this is saying if you if you use the health hospital, you lose a sanity. If you use the asylum, you lose a stamina. Just means that there's an extra cost to the $2. Well, that was a pretty good turn. 
we have one, two, three gates in tow now. Okay, well that is it my friends. I will see you guys next time.